Greetings, everybody, and welcome to the Armour. My name is Victor, as always, joined by Blue. Hello, hello. And today we're having a look at the spoilers for Bright Light, and specifically the cards that we think will make an impact and will be playable in Constructed. Starting primarily with the cards for the new Dash Hero, and the first card is Haste. It's a red that costs 2, attacks for 5 and defense for 3, and it says boost. When this hits a hero, you may put an item with cost 0 or 1 from any banish zone into the arena under your control. Yeah, so this card is um, good basically because it's one of the few cards, if not the only card, that allows you to recycle your items from your banish zone. Um, so new dash allows you to just play them from the top of your deck, but you won't always be able to do that. Sometimes you have to sacrifice certain items in order to be able to play your boost attacks that you inevitably have to play in order to kill your opponent. And uh, Heist allows you to basically threaten a non-irrelevant on-hit effect, allowing you to kind of reuse some of your, uh, some of your items that you may be banished uh, throughout the game. Yes, it's a really nice Majestic, and I think it will be very usable if you manage to pull it in limited play as well. Uh, yeah, uh, definitely. I mean, in limited, people will probably be playing items in whatever deck they, they conjure. Yep, moving onward to Expedite. That's a red costing zero, attacks for three, and defense for three. It has boost, and when this hits, you may put an item with cost zero one from your hand into the arena. Bear in mind, it says when this hits, it doesn't have to hit a hero, so this is useful against ally hits. Yeah, and uh, then we have the next card, which is basically the same. Which is pretty much the same medics, just costs one and attacks for four, which is a break point, which is always better, but of course costs a bit more. Defense for three and does the exact same thing, and again, it's just hit, it doesn't have to hit a hero. Yeah, so basically the idea of both of these is that um, they just allow you to uh, use these items uh, directly from your hand, right? Because um, if, if we, if we want to make use of Dash's ability, we'll have to be playing items. And those items will not always be on top of our deck. Sometimes we will draw them and Medtex and Expedite basically allow us to just uh, make use of them out from our hand. Uh, a lot of these items will have the new crank keyword allowing us to remove a steam counter in order to give us an action point and uh, Dash's weapon also gets uh, steam counters whenever an item enters the arena um, so a lot of times these will also function as uh, extenders in a way um, allowing us to uh, shoot with the, with the pistol like a, one or two times or something like this yeah, pretty interesting, and mind you, it's on a common slot. Yeah, uh, you'll be able to play more of those uh, if you want. Yep, moving on to the mini force field. This has Crank, the new ability, and this enters the arena with four steam counters. At the start of your turn, destroy this unless you remove a steam counter from it. And it has Ward X, where X is the number of steam counters of this. This is a mechanologist action item. Yeah, so this is basically um, somewhat of a mechanologist uh, defense reaction uh, in Dash, right? If you see this on top of your deck, uh, especially during your opponent's turn, you'll be able to basically spend two resources in order to play this from the top of your deck um, and just block four straight up. Um, and that that's its utility basically, right? It, it just allows you to play some sort of a defense reaction in a mechanologist deck. Uh, yeah, so you don't they, have to take the reacts into your deck uh, in order to fail the boost and whatnot. Yeah, and they don't commonly have access to, to similar cards. Uh, and it's worked, so it's also going to be blocking arcane damage, uh, making it even more useful against things like Kano if you, if you need it. It's just, yeah. it's just cool. Overall good card. Moving over to the next mechanologist item, that's Boo Grenade. 
again it has crank and this enters the arena with a steam counter at the start of your turn destroy this unless you remove a steam counter from it when a mechanologist attack action card you control hit a hero destroy this and deal four damage to them um yeah so if this is on the field it's going to be basically threatening for additional damage which is nice um but like the whole point is that technically we can use this in new dash as a uh, one cost attack reaction right because you attack with the mechanology stack your opponent says no blocks you say okay in response i'm going to use uh, dash's ability pay an additional resource play the boom grenade from the top of, of my deck uh, it enters the arena gives your uh, weapon uh, Gives your weapon a steam, counter. a steam counter, you crank it, gain an action point, uh, your mechanology stack hits, you destroy the boom grenade and deal 4 damage. Uh, that's uh, like a, the a line of play. in a way. Yeah. Um, and, and there's a big possibility that you actually will be wanting to play like rainbow copies of boom grenade because it's, it's just a strong play like that, right? And it's um, a, absolutely, and it's a really nice finisher with not many answers. You, you just need ward, something to prevent the damage. Uh, yeah, I mean, especially in a situation where, for example, you go boost um, an attack into another attack that you elect not to boost and it signals to your opponent that it's kind of like the end of your turn. Uh, but instead of it being the end of your turn, you just say attack reaction, I play the boom grenade, it deals 4 more damage, I gain an action point back, uh, and I can now either continue playing or just shoot an additional 2 with my weapon, uh, to which off of the red boom grenade is kind of like a 1 for 6 damage, which is pretty, pretty strong. It is pretty good, it is pretty strong, yeah. So, security script. Uh, blue costs one it's again an item it has crank and this enters the arena with a steam counter at the start of your turn destroy this unless you remove a steam counter from it your mechanologist attack action cards get plus one defense yeah so this is basically just to me seems like a, a nice blue to have um, simply because it's going to allow you to just block four uh, for turn or two, which can be very crucial against a lot of decks, uh, because like four is such a common breakpoint, and a lot of your attacks will probably be blocking for uh, three. Uh, they anyway. are blocking for three, and the thing is that a lot of your items doesn't block at all, so it's nice to have a little bit of extra block. Yeah, that that that's true, and that's basically the the entire logic behind this card, right? It's it's just. It's just maybe a useful blue that you might want to play. Yep. Um, Grinding gears. There's another majestic. It has crank, cost zero. Again, it's a blue item. And it says, this enters the arena with a steam counter. At the start of your turn, destroy this unless you remove a steam counter from it. Action for zero. Target hero destroys the top card of their deck. So this... It's not really constricted playable, but I wanted to include it because uh, it can potentially be a very funny meme card. Uh, the idea being that with so many uh, rank items now, as well as certain cards that allow you to uh, kind of bounce them and they enter the arena again, uh, and we have so much, so many more boost cards that can synergize with uh, high octane, uh, basically allowing you to gain an obscene amount of action points during a combo turn and then you can use all of your action points into grinding gears and try to destroy your opponent's deck. That's, uh, <laughs> Just take him out. Yeah, that's basically <laughs> it. Uh, I I've heard of some uh, magical Christmas land 20 action point combos. I have no idea what exactly they are. I'm not sure if, if I have to believe them. Uh, but uh, if I if I figure them out or like learn of them, uh, I, will, I will definitely share. It, it definitely seems fun, uh, especially for like UPF. Uh, just <laughs> yeah. destroy someone's fun. It uh, sounds sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, moving to Techno Volson though. Okay, it's a mechanologist instant. It's fabricate. It's red. It costs zero, and you can choose two. Equip a base equipment with Proto in its name from your inventory. 
Evil permanent you control get plus one defense this turn. Put this under an evil permanent you control, and you may banish an evil from your hand. If you do, draw a card. Which so, two mold you think would be chosen the most? I guess it's drawing it's, a card. Yeah, like drawing a card is probably going to be the one that you'll be going for the most. Uh, but all of the rest are kind of depending dependent on what you what you want to do uh, with your deck. Yeah. Um, certain evils want to have uh, cards underneath them in order to to use and um, like get more uses out of. Uh, obviously, getting your three block equipment up to four and uh, as well as like drawing a card and like blocking uh, a four attack. Card is also nice. Uh, equipping a proto base in its name from your inventor is also nice because it allows you to do some interesting things like uh, run tunic for like half the game, and then the moment you have like all of your other evils equipped and you have uh, gained some uh, efficiency and use out of the tunic, you can simply block with the tunic, destroy it, and then play fabricate. Uh, get yourself a proto base equipment out of the uh, out of your inventory. Same with like any other armor piece that you can actually destroy. Uh, so it opens up a bunch of interesting and cool plays that you can do in evil centric decks. Uh, technically, it seems that you may be able to make some evil builds of of the of other characters, not only Tekwo. How good they are they, I don't know, probably be, not, yeah. not much. Uh, so, but yeah, it's, it's so just it's, interesting, it's kind of like like a mechanology start of war. Yeah, and it's obviously this card is the reason for them to reprint Tunic in the set, because it fits so well the game plan of Fabricate. Yes, that's, uh, yeah, uh, that, that's the, the entire intention. <laughs> Right, moving on with this Crop Trader. It's a red that costs zero. It's a mechanology section, defense for two. It has scrap. It has scrap again, and you gain two resources for each card this scrapped. Yeah, so basically the idea here is that um, if you if you want to be running uh, a tech loop based on around his uh, blue evils that cost four mana, uh, and you want to be a lot more defensive, your game plan is going to be just to block with them and then later on scrap them with any effects you get in order to put them into the banish zone and then later play them off the banish zone uh, to his ability. And a uh, card like Scrap Trader is going to allow you to do that more efficiently um, because basically off of a two card hand you'll be able to play Scrap Trader, banish two of your rivals, gain four resources which is the amount an, an evil cost and then you just need to pitch a blue from your hand in order to uh, activate uh, Tekko's ability to play an, e an evil at instant speed uh, then playing the evil at instant speed, drawing a card and it's basically a two card hand that sets up two evils in your bunny zone, equips one uh, and draws you an arsenal and it's just very very efficient for that type of game plan and I think it's it's going to be probably one of the most powerful cards in, in a deck that tries to win to establishing the blue evils. Pretty, pretty much, yeah. Pretty strong card, indeed. Yeah. A card in the same vein as this. It's the Trap Prospector. It's a blue that costs zero. It's a mechanologist action attack. Attacks for one and defense for three. It has crap, and when this attacks, if it's crapped a card, gain one resource. Yeah, so this basically has the, the same idea, right? Uh, Tekwo allows you to uh, play evils at instant speed for 3 resources, and then your evils cost 4 resources, so that's 7 resources, and 7 resources is very hard to achieve uh, efficiently. Uh, but a card like Scrap or Prospector is going to help you with that, right? Uh, because it costs zero, so you can basically play Scrap Prospector, then pitch two blues, and there you go, you have seven resources, being able to at instant speed uh, after the Scrap Prospector, equip an evil, and then draw a card off of Tekvo's ability, uh, essentially giving you a somewhat efficient three card turn where you uh, equip an evil and have an arsenal. Yeah, very playable card at common slot. Uh, yeah, and I think. Uh, 
th this this type of decks may even want you on rainbow copies of this card. Um, but I guess we'll see in the future. Yeah, moving on to the Terminator tank. One of the lovely Majestics that cost 6, attacks for 6, defense for 3, it's a mechanologist action attack. And if you have one or more, you also equip this gets when this hits a hero, they discard a card. Two or more, this costs 3 less to play. Three or more, this gets overpower. And four or more, this gets plus 3 attack. Yeah, so this is basically your uh, evil payoff, right? Uh, yep. What you get for equipping, for like fully equipping your evils is uh, these type of cards that all of a sudden become a 3 for 9 overpower with a very strong home hit effect of just discard the card. Uh, and 9 overpower is relatively hard to stop, right? Especially when it just needs to deal 1 damage in order to, to gain its effect. Yeah, we're uh, getting into Bravo attack territory here. Yeah, basically. Um, it's going to be interesting to me to see if um, it's going to be viable to have uh, some turbo evil decks um, that are going to be playing the zero cost evils and just a lot of boost trying to uh, trying to get to the fully uh, evil suit uh, as fast as possible regardless of like the quality of the evils and just try to win through the eff effectiveness the efficiency of the uh, evil upgrade cards um, that's going to come at the cost of uh, literally having no block on your equipment uh, but we'll see i guess we'll see yeah another payoff a swarm machine another majestic mechanologist action cost six attacks for six defense for three if you have one or more evils equip this gets when this hits a hero destroy all cards in their arsenal so, so a little yeah. bit of command and conquer vibe and yeah, it's, it's basically the same. the same yeah but it's command and conquer this time uh there's a third one uh but the third one has a uh, relatively useless effect in my opinion so i did not include it uh, and i feel like these two may prove to just be enough uh, the tank and the war machine yeah yeah and, and lastly but not least teclavosan the mech um, i'm always struggling to pronounce this word mechropotent it's like yeah. necropotent but mechropotent yes yes um it, uh, action for three resources, banish two cards from your soul and attack. It has six attack, six defense, three intellect, and the health probably will be uh, what the, the amount of health you have the minute you play this. Whenever this attacks a hero, they discard a card. Your mechanologist attack action card get go again, and this counts as having four evils equipped. Of course, it's better worn. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is kind of your big payoff because this comes off of uh, playing the Singularity, a legendary Tekko boss specialization. Um, I, I'm personally not too sure if, if you're going to just win on the spot the moment uh, this resolves. I mean, it obviously looks pretty strong, right? Uh, six Battle Worn is basically, uh, what's that, 6, 5, 11, and 4, 15. And then like another six, like twenty-one more health. Uh, That's a lot. Yeah, yeah. It is you, a lot. It... If you get to be just blocking uh, constantly, obviously the, the problem here is going to be the three intellect, uh, yeah. and the other problem is going to be how fast are you actually going to be able to assemble this? Because once again, um, it's a legendary specialization. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping we still have we still do not have the full text of the card, but I'm hoping that the card reads something along the lines of uh, you can play this from your punish zone, uh, so that you can make use of boost cards without having to worry you're going to punish your singularity and there goes one of your win conditions uh, possibly. Yeah, um, that would be that would be very powerful. Yeah, if if you just try to turbo him out. Uh, without stacking um, evils on top of evils and using uh, fabricates to put themselves on their cards. Uh, this is going to come in with uh, 
like eight cards in soul, I believe, which is going to give you four attacks. Um, and this attacks for a blue. Um, this attack itself does not have go again, but like best case scenario, what you want to be doing is uh, draw two blues and a tank and go for a nine In dominate. A world, yeah. yeah, like nine overpower. Uh, discard the card, uh, go again into just six, discard the card. Um, yeah, I, I don't it, think it will be that easy to pull to pull it off. Yeah, like the the cool thing at least is that um, it forces your opponent to discard the card the moment you attack them. Um, so they like. Hopefully you run them out of blocks so that you can push damage through. Uh, because you, you really won't be getting all that many attacks. And I feel like if your opponent manages to uh, grab tempo out from you uh, somehow, uh, you're going to have like very, very tough time coming back. Uh, but like I guess the six armor is going to help you not lose tempo, I guess. I guess it helps a lot. Yeah, it, it protects well. Yeah, but it's at the very low, at the very least a cool concept that uh, we're definitely going to be trying out and experimenting. And it's <laughs> yeah. a shadow mechanology's damn hero, which is very cool and kind of uh, adds a little bit more flavor to him being able to interact with the banish zone, uh, kind of like the same as the other uh, heroes. Shadow heroes, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Moving onwards to Max, that's Moonshot, a yellow majestic uh, with cost XX, attacks for 3 and defense for 3, and play this only if you've boosted this turn. There's an additional cost to play this, destroy X hyper drivers you control. When this attacks, it gets plus 3 for each hyper driver destroyed this way. If this has 10 or more attack power, it gets overpower. Yeah, so... Um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to show some, uh, in my opinion, a little bit more interesting uh, hyper driver cards uh, that we have gotten. Uh, in my honest opinion, the best uh, Max deck is probably going to be a deck that is a lot more lean. Uh, in terms of the cards that they're using, they're just going to be using cards that are like always live, cards that are always good value, cards that require no setup, and they're just going to use their ability as uh, something that's going to allow them to make their inefficient hands slightly more efficient and to like transfer uh, resources to later turns uh, if they draw like a second blue and just not lose steam, uh, yes, pun intended. Uh, <laughs> right. But uh, but I guess there's uh, an archetype to be uh, played or figured out or tinkered with um, that is going to try and set up some hyper drivers instead of just attacking the same way as uh, Boost Dash used to, and is maybe going to be using like the the, the hyper driver cards themselves. Uh, and in a, in an archetype like this, Moonshot is definitely seems like a, a finisher, right? Um, it, you need you need to put a lot of resources into it, right? In order to put it above ten, uh, you need to destroy three hyper drivers. Uh, in order to do that, you need to pay six resources, basically. So this can become like a, a six for uh, twelve with overpower, yeah. I believe. Well, uh, as you said, this is intended to be played as a finisher, so you just pitch stack it early on in, in the game along with the rest yeah, of the Yeah, and I mean, features. the thing is that if you have three hyper drivers, the moment you boost it, uh, you're going to net like three resources, so like getting resources to play this is not going to be that hard, uh, especially yeah. when we look at our next card for an archetype like this. It's a hyper scrapper, it's a blue card costing X, not XX, attacks for two, defense for three, mechanology stack action, and there's an additional cost to play this banish X items from your graveyard. When this attacks, it gets plus X. If three or more hyper drivers were hyper drivers were banished to play this, gain 
six resources and this gets go again. Yeah, so like Hyper Scrapper straight up is going to just allow you to, uh, to pay for the moonshot, moon shot, right? Um, if you if you have like three Hyper Drivers on the field, uh, you can play a zero cost boost, uh, get the resources from the Hyper Drivers. Hopefully the Hyper Drivers don't just get destroyed, right? Like they still yeah. have a steam counter. Uh, after that, you can go for hyper uh, hyper scrapper, using those three resources, attacking for five go again, banishing three hyper drivers from your graveyard, giving you six resources that you can then use uh, for your moonshot to come in for like twelve overpower. Um, sounds like magical Christmas land. <laughs> again. Is. Um, but the thing is, you in a, in an archetype like this, you probably don't need to. Um, you probably don't need to have like these specific lines, right? Uh, even if you go for like a five card hand where you go uh, Pitcher Blue into Hyper Scrapper to go for five go again, gain six resources and you can then just play three throttles or something like this, right? It's, yeah. it's just, it's still powerful. Uh, it is definitely. And out of the three heroes, I'm, I'm guessing because the way they've designed it, Max is supposed to be like the, the fastest one, the aggro one. Dash is more mid rangey and Tech Provost is the slow mechanologist. Yeah, so that, that's how it seems. A, but I yeah, feel like that, all of them are going to just boost at some point, right? Yeah, it's in their blood. <laughs> boost is life. Boost is life. Right, moving to Big Bertha. It's a uh, mechanologist action attack, attacks for four, defense for three. It's a blue one that costs three and says when this is banished from boosting, put a steam counter on a hyper driver you control. Yeah, so this is here just because I feel like if you're going to be attempting any sort of hyper driver based strategy, blue big bird is just an auto include, right? Uh, yeah. to whenever you draw it, it's uh, blue, whenever you block with it, it's a tree, but if you banish it, it's going to it's extend the life, yeah. yeah, it's going to extend the life off of your uh, hyper driver, right? And because Max needs to boost in order to uh, use his ability to set up hyper drivers, he, he can never have more than two hyper drivers unless he uh, of the tokens, unless he extends their life through some effects like Big Bertha that put additional steam counters. Um, and yeah, Big Bertha is going to allow you to do that. Yeah, then I guess... Uh, yeah, I was going to say about, about Big Bertha, it, it's very flavorful, it's very nice, but I guess for, for some reason they didn't want to call it Fat Bertha, which is the original character that, he was, that this was built upon, so yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just big. <laughs> yeah, it's big. Moving on to Recharge. That's a Mechanologist action. It's red costing one, defense for two, and put a steam counter on a hyperdriver you control. The next attack you boost this turn gets plus four. Go again. Yeah, so this uh, may end up being in the like same hyperdriver archetype. It may go into like a, a separate kind of team where you try to go for like just very big attacks instead of very wide attacks. Uh, Recharge is like baseline cool because it's technically just a 0 for 4, right? Because um, like yes, it costs 1, but it technically just pays for itself by putting a steam counter on a hyper driver you control. Yeah, pretty nice card again at common slot, very playable. Yeah. Uh, very very playable and then this moving to gas up it's a mechanologist action red costing one defending for two the next attack you push this turn gets plus four you may put a hyper driver from your banish zone into the arena go again yeah so basically the same idea as before right uh, you can maybe go for this uh, go a little bit taller instead of wider and uh, focus more on hyper drivers, and this allows you to reuse your hyper drivers, right? Like uh, sometimes you just banish your hyper drivers, and be sad. Well, Gasup is just going to replenish them for you. Yeah, so boost away the drivers. Gasup is going to bring him back. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. And uh, 
moving to a legendary yeah. Hyper X3. That's a mechanologist equipment head. Whenever you banish a hyper driver from boosting, put it under this. Once per turn, when a hyper driver is put under this, if there are three or more hyper drivers under this, draw a card. It's battle worn, and I'm guessing quite difficult to pull off. I mean, I'm not sure that like I wouldn't say it's difficult. I'd say it's just uh, going to be time uh, consuming uh, because. Technically, in like cycle two or three, you would inevitably end up banishing uh, a lot of cards, and some of them are definitely going to be hyper drivers. Um, because you can't block with the hyper drivers, you can elect to not play the hyper drivers, right? If you choose to play only blue and yellows, uh, using them for pitch, at one point you're just going to banish them. Um, and in a in a game state and gameplay like this, uh, Hyper X3 is going to allow you to just draw three additional cards per game, uh, which can be very devastating, right? If you have a five card hand that suddenly turns into a six card hand in a deck that can just boot out its ass, is going to be very very strong. Uh, now the obvious problems with this are once again this kind of only happens cycle 2, 3 and onward, which is I'm going late to into say, the game. Do you think that the meta will be that slow? No, I don't. Uh, but uh, it doesn't really matter, right? Because you can technically just... Uh, if you're going to be playing the Hyper Drivers anyway, you can just in include this uh, if you're going to be going against a deck that forces you to play slower. And you can kind of try to go over the top uh, later in the game by just having more cards being able to attack more times than they can block. Um, but with that being said, um, it puts Hyper Drivers into Banish only if you banish them from boosting. So that means that uh, no Tech Loop Boundary Heart activations. Uh, I mean, you can obviously use it, but uh, the foundry is not a boosting effect, so if you banish them through the foundry, you're going to be very, very sad. I and mean, technically, if you banish them through the foundry, you can use gas up to bring them back. Uh, but then you have to find a way to put them back to the deck. Uh, <laughs> okay. To yeah. So that's very convoluted, but it's it's definitely something that uh, I think people will experiment. Especially in uh, slower matchups, because um, I'm not sure Max has uh, other avenues of uh, of winning, like uh, fatigue games. I think. I mean, technically, mm -hmm. maybe with Moon Blast, a uh, Moon Shot. Moon shot. Excuse me, <laughs> Moon Shot, right? Yeah. Uh, it's just the, the huge overpower attacks. Uh, but yeah. Right, and moving to Twin Drive, it's a mechanology section attack. It's a nice majestic red costs 2, attacks for 5 and defense for 3, and it has double boost, which helps your maximum velocity a lot. Yeah, uh, so we're moving to kind of just generally good um, mechanology cars that I think you can see play in a lot of decks. Um, double boosting uh, is going to help you in Tech uh, if you want to just turbo banish your deck in order to find your evils as up. Um, it's also going to help you in like high octane turns in dash. It's going to help you in maximum velocity turns in uh, like max probably. Uh, and it's going to help you deck yourself really fast in blitz. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, who cares if I manage to just squeeze the maximum velocity in, right? Absolutely correct. Um, Moving on with the yep. Firewall. It's a mechanologist block for four. When this defends, reveal the top card of your deck. If it's an evil, put it on the top of your deck. Otherwise, put it on the bottom. Yeah, so this um, I've included simply because it's just a or block mechanologist card. It's um, it's not a defense reaction. You cannot block with it from the arsenal. 
uh, but it can block a CNC and it's it's just a four block and, and that's, it's just four block. Yeah, that that seems seems fine. Obviously, if you're uh, running this in uh, in any evil sentry deck, which right now seems to be mainly Teku Wilson, it's even better uh, because you can simply once again just thin your deck uh, and just get deeper and deeper into your deck trying to find your evils uh, while still blocking for four and that's just great yep and again it's something like a d-react that you can still boost without fear of not getting go again yeah kind of I mean, um, in the same vein as this, there's a bunch of uh, new cards in Mechanologist that are uh, all two block, but have a galvanize ability that allows you to destroy an item on the field in order to turn them into four block cards. Uh, I have not included those because they seem to be kind of very strictly for dash only and limited. And I'm not even sure you're going to be wanting to just destroy your uh, items as dash uh, that frequently. Exactly. So, yeah, but you still have the options of going for like even more four blocks if you need them. And finally, the Mechanologist arm slot. Adaptive plating. It's a Mechanologist equipment that uh, has blade break and it defends for one and it's modular which means this may be equipped on any equipment zone it has the subtype of the zone it is equipped to and action for zero equip this to another equipment zone and there's galvanize when this defends you may destroy an item you control if you do this gets plus two until the end of turn so it's a three block yeah it's it, it can basically become a three block and uh, you you correctly identify that in my opinion this is just going to take the place of the um the the, the glove slot the hand slot um in a lot of mechanologies decks because right now uh people are running like the the one block mechanologist uh, uh rp is that literally does nothing and or um, uh, the, the hands that give you plus two to your next uh, two cost attack and uh, adaptive plating just seems better than both of those in uh, the new dash because you can simply get rid of a item you don't care about anymore to just block three which is a, a very decent amount and with max you can just get rid of your token hyperdriver that you really do not care for right because it's just a token yeah but considering max will be the more aggro uh mechanologies i think he might still want to play the what, what was the name of the, those gloves uh gaunt, colossal gauntlets yeah but I mean, that's only if he, he wants to be playing a lot of two cost cards. And I don't think he he would like that. Uh, even, and even then, I feel like aggressive decks really do appreciate when they have uh, big blocks that they can rely on to kind of... Uh, Save cards and have yeah, gas like in hand. That, yeah, just uh, regain or retain tempo. Yeah, pretty much. So obviously this is, uh, to me, in my personal opinion, this is the most interesting legendary so far. I mean, I would have liked it a lot more if it was a base equipment allowing you to just put a uh, Evo on top of it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because that would have allowed you to just play it in any mechanologist and just play a bunch of evils that you may need in those mechanologist decks and just but just, i would have been too strong would it i mean well i don't know i think so would i don't be a know bit uh, my my honest opinion is that uh nothing really seems uh, incredibly strong in this new set uh outside of maybe just very crazy uh max decks uh that will just have uh, a lot of uh, damage output uh, but he still lacks uh, like relevant on hits, right? Like compared to Fi, who who still doesn't have relevant on hits compared to Katsu. 
Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure it's going to be. Not. I'm not sure Max is going to be contending with uh, with the other Agotex. I don't know. I guess we'll. I guess we'll see. But uh, again, an, another take. As we discussed prior to the prior to this call, none of the heroes seems like straight out that are bad pushed or more powerful than the others or something that will be introduced as the new power deck that goes into S tier or something like this. Uh, yeah, definitely this uh, follows the design trend of uh, the past set of LSS uh, where the heroes, like, uh, we, we no longer get heroes that are just a straight up uh, and just easy to figure out and build as the old decks were. Right, uh, a, a lot of these decks have a lot of moving pieces uh, and a lot of moving parts where you can't really focus on one thing simply because you do not have enough resources for that one thing. And like the other thing has like very useful cards. Like for example, how uh, Uzuri wants to be playing some stealth cards and some contract cards and sometimes you want to be playing attack reactions but other times you don't want to be playing attack reactions and you kind of have to go between these like three to four different type of cards uh, same with like Vincent uh, where you, you need your uh, blood depths and then you need your rune chant generation and then you need your go again neighbors and then you get, need your uh, payoffs and uh, you know like once again three four different type of cards uh, new prism is the same where you need your defensive pieces you need your angels you need your heralds you need some auras yeah exactly uh, you just need a, a lot of a lot of stuff and figuring out the right balance between uh, between them is going to be rough, right? It's going to take a bunch of uh, play testing, and it's not going to be uh, done simply by theory crafting, right? Especially when you compare yeah. it to like old Prism, uh, where we just figured out just like play every play yellow, yellow card, yeah. right? just put the yellow ores in, put the yellow heralds in, the, the deck is done, right? Um, right. The same yeah, with like so that. many other decks, right? Like Bravo is the same, right? Just play the, the, the three good red attacks and just 40 blues, right? And the good yellow one. Yeah, I mean the good yellow yeah. one is, 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 is new, right? It's one of the three red ones, right? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Well, okay. Thanks everyone for watching. And listen, tell us in the comments if we missed something. Do you agree with our take? Do you disagree with something? Please let us know. And as always, we will see you at the next one. Bye-bye.